So in this video, I want to talk about the three levels of learning to make you phenomenal at anything. Now, before I do, I want to remind you to like, subscribe and share and do all that kind of stuff. Now, let's get started. These three levels are interesting. This is something I thought about a lot and it took me a little while to actually see this, but I started to see this in clients as they were growing. And as I started to see this and started to point it out to clients, I literally saw their growth improve radically. Now, this is especially true with clients that were stuck in the first level. This first level is huge. And if you don't get this first level right, well, the other two levels become immensely painful. And at the top level, the level where you really explode with success, if you get that level right and you start to understand what's really going on at that level, you begin to understand what holds you back from fully being the man or woman, if there's a woman watching this, that you are meant to be. And by the way, I believe all of you have a gift to give to the world. All of you have something you came here to give. So getting you to that third level and helping to set you free on that level is, in my opinion, one of the most important things we can do. So let's dive in. Let's start with level number one. Level number one is really simple. A lot of teachers talk about it. Well, it's simple in theory. In practice, it is work. People mess this up all the time. They get it conceptually and then they screw it up and go back and do it again anyways. They say, yeah, 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 I understand that. But then you can watch them doing the opposite over and over again. And I want to ask you if this is you. Do you do this behavior in your life? And if you do, where do you do it? Definitely put this in the comments. Let's dive in. What is that behavior? Well, that behavior is simply put that you are not good at enjoying life just the way it is. You're not good at having fun, having it. what I literally talk about is an open heart, grounded energy where life is beautiful. Life is fun. Let's say 60, 70, preferably 80% of the time, you can really begin to say, I like my life. I wake up with passion. I wake up ready to seize the day, not going after your goal, not going after bigger dreams. Like, can you be happy? I want to ask you, can you be happy doing the dishes? Can you be happy doing your homework most of the time can you be happy going to work in the morning and have a skip in your step or do you wake up looking at life like life sucks are you only looking to grow so you can run away from the life you currently have you see the problem with that is when we're miserable now and now's the only time there is when we're miserable now that now follows us to our next place of being so if we quit our job because we're miserable here and we hate it and I'm going to and I want to hate everybody in this job so I can quit and find a new one typically we're miserable in the new job if we're miserable with the girl we have now and there's something wrong with her and we're bitching moaning complaining making her the bad guy then what happens is when you get a new girl you end up eventually maybe not right away creating that same scenario over again you see when you don't know how to be happy and you don't know how to enjoy life just the way it is it's really really hard to grow and when you do grow you tend to recreate that same pattern so what does this mean when you don't like a job how can you not like a job and still be happy well, that's a very doable thing. You can overall love life and say, this is not the job for me. You can overall love life and not bitch, moan, and complain about your girlfriend, accept her the way she is, see her as beautiful, and at the same time say, this is not the girl for me. You know, we don't get along. We're not compatible. You don't need to hate your current reality to grow. And so many people do. I run into a lot of clients that have apathy, a lot of unresolved apathy, grief, abandonment issues, and they're only looking to get to the next level, whether it's in money or with women. And a lot of guys on this channel are working on women only so they can be happy. If I get another girl, I'll be happy. If I have five girlfriends at once, I'll be happy. If I have $2 million in the bank, I'll be happy. A million's not enough anymore, is it? Um, little things like that. And I want to invite you into this idea that and just try this on. Try this on for a little bit for the rest of this video. That's not true. Happiness does not come from something you get externally. The anything you get externally that makes you happy, and that does work. You can get something externally, it'll make you happy, but it'll only make you happy temporarily. Your baseline, is that's what I'm talking about, this foundation, like the foundation to a house, the root system in the ground has to be solid to sustain the happiness through the tough times, through the challenges you're going to have. And if you don't have that solid foundation, then when you get happiness externally, I got a new car. Look, isn't it amazing? A couple months later, yeah, yeah, whatever. I forget about the car. I mean, how many times does that happen? You get a new car and then a year later, it's a piece of junk or you don't care about it or you're not thinking about it anymore. That type of stuff. Or you get a new car and you're so attached to it as your source of value, you're not enjoying it anymore either. You're trying to protect it 
keep it safe. Don't touch it. Don't drive it. These are perfect examples. Another example would be going to the gym. I'm trying to work out to get a killer body, to get an awesome girlfriend so that everybody will be impressed with me. And I'm miserable doing it because all I see in the mirror when I work out is somebody that's a little overweight, that doesn't have the muscles, that's not sexy enough, that's not cool enough. So he's pushing to get there, pushing to get there. And all you're doing is pumping tons of cortisol into the body, stress hormones. And this cortisol, these stress hormones are keeping you fat, keeping extra weight on your body, making it hard to work out, burning you out, making you not want to get out of bed in the morning. What if, if you just try this on for a moment, you could wake up in the morning ready to seize the day 60% of the time, 70% of the time, 80% of the time. We'll have a lot of clients to do. Didn't start that way, but they do now. And that's the reality I'm talking about. Learning to wake up ready to seize the day, ready to go after your dreams. This is a real powerful reality when you think about it. And it doesn't have to be 100% of the time. And it doesn't have to be immensely happy. Life doesn't have to be perfect. But overall, I like it. I like my life. My heart is open. I can feel the embodiment of my heart, which I talk a lot about. That's step number one. And so many people are out there saying, when I solve this external problem, I'll be happy. And they think about it so much. So what's an example of that? Well, you got a problem and you spend all this time saying, well, I'm going to fix it by doing X, Y, and Z so I can stop being miserable. I have this problem and I'm going to start a business so I can make a bunch of money so I can quit my job I hate. And I'm going to do it by doing X, Y, and Z. And overall, you don't have any love for yourself. You're not waking up generally content or happy with life. And when you reach that content stage, when you reach that happy stage where you're enjoying life, maybe you don't love your job, but you're enjoying life overall. It's good. I like it 70% of the time. And I go to start a business. I'm not starting a business to run from pain so much, to get out of pain and burning out and then quitting and starting in later. I'm starting a business to empower myself, to grow myself. You know what? Life's all right, but I can be better. And I'm going to build something even better now. And I can't wait to get up in the morning and do it every day. Now, one last point with this. I want to illustrate. There's a lot of people out there that say, go, go, go. You got to step in the pain. You got to push every day. And if you look at those people, people like Goggins and, and people like that in the world, they love the push. They're, they enjoy it. They thrive on that stress. They are actually happy when they do that. That's their baseline happiness is push, 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 hustle, push, 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 go to the next level. Is that you? I want to ask you, is that you? A lot of people, it's not. When they do that push and they go for their dreams, it just burns them out because they don't have a base, again, what I'm talking about, to build that hustle culture off of. Now, if that's you and you get a really solid base and you're generally happy with life, but you don't love your job, maybe your relationship's not perfect, but you know life's good. And then you build that hustle culture. Now you have a 10 times better degree of success at doing that, at building that. I'm going to get up every day. And I'm going to go for it. But I've also seen the opposite. Mark Allen's a perfect example. I only work 30 hours a week. I'm lazy. I'm slow. But when I work, I work solid, built multi, several multi-million dollar businesses. You got to work congruent with you. And I would love for you to put in a comment right now. How do you see this? What is your life like? Are you the hustle guy? Are you the guy that really wants to build life in an easy, relaxed way? Do you want to flow with life? Maybe you want to live in Bali on the beach and have an online business that makes a few thousand a month and surf most of the time. Nothing wrong with that. Both are beautiful. You got to figure out what's right for you. Step number two, let's dive right into that now. Step number two is the step where once you're happy, generally happy with life, you can stay pretty solid. When you get a little thrown off by life, you get a curveball, you're, you're pretty quick at recovering. Maybe you're sad for a bit, but then you set a timer. Maybe you set a timer for 30 minutes. Say, I'm going to be sad for 30 minutes and I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to figure out and get my heart back open and get out of this. And when you start getting really good at not letting yourself stay depressed, sad, or angry for too long, you do it, you honor it, you give it its due, and then you move on. And you get good at that, then you begin to enter stage two. Stage two is where you begin to go after your dreams. You set goals. Now, for a lot of people, when they go after their dreams, if they don't have stage one, hear this, if they're not really good at stage one, if they go after their dreams, they crash. They go to chase women, they crash. They go to get a girlfriend, they crash. They go to make money, they crash. Because it it hurts inside. All those beliefs, they're already sad. And then they they bring up all these beliefs. Now, hear this, you're already sad. You're already kind of like, life sucks. 
and then you go after your dream. Maybe it's a beautiful woman. She rejects you and it just hurts that much more. It crushes you inside and you just feel super depressed. That's what I'm talking about. Now, imagine you got a really good baseline. You know how to get happy within a half hour, an hour. Like I got sad, I got angry, got over it, let it go. Maybe it's 10 minutes, boom. And I can get back to focus again, back to opening my heart again. Now you go out and you start practicing stage two. You approach a few women, you say hi and boom, you get a little crushed like this hurts she rejected me and she rejected me cold and maybe it takes 30 minutes because it's important to you maybe it takes an hour but you get out of it you get out there and do it again you say i'm happy again it's good i let that go you do it again you do it again every story you go through that comes up while you're in this stage is one more story that needs to be let go of so you can become the man you're meant to be was you let go of the pain of each of these approaches the doubt the worry the confusion the sadness and you keep processing it, you get back to this baseline as fast as humanly possible, you start to become literally more confident. But if you don't have a baseline to get back to, you can't become confident. So that's stage two. In stage two, we're mastering the art at going after our goal and being thrown off when we get a curveball as little as possible, as short as possible. Maybe it's an hour, maybe it's two hours, maybe it's three. I have one client right now. He was super, super, for lack of a better term, depressed, apathetic when he came to me. And he worked really hard at learning to get happy. He got really happy, not going after his goals, but he got really happy just being. He was loving life. Went after his goals and he would crash. It was dating goals. And go after a dating goal and crash. Immediately heavy. Couldn't approach a woman. They wouldn't want to talk to him anyways because he was so apathetic. So we started working on saying, okay, how quickly can you get back, one, approach one woman, be around some beautiful women, and get back to that baseline as fast as possible. He would get out around these women, one crash, he would he would go down for four hours. Then he'd go out again, he'd do it again, pretty soon it's three hours. And then he'd crash for two hours. And then it's getting down to an hour. And then it's getting down. He's getting to where he doesn't crash anymore. Like he goes out to talk to women and there's a little sadness if he gets really rejected hard and then, eh, I'm over it because he mastered that baseline and then he balanced the two a little bit at a time gonna go after my goal get my baseline back go after my goal get my baseline back when you can get really good at going after your goal and not being affected by the negative not being affected by rejection not being affected by things not working and or working because sometimes you go after your goal and somebody gives you your number and you freak out because oh my god it's working now that happens too i know that's happened to some of you out there so if that's happened to you definitely put a comment when you go after your goal and you start to get comfortable with all the challenges the stories the difficulties that come up and you start to learn to laugh at them all and you can get back to that strong baseline again really quickly when you get thrown off now you can begin to go after stage three stage three is simply the ability to get your goal in a solid way to go after your dream and to really start to have success you're no longer bothered by the rejections as much anymore if at all and i have a client right now that's just killing it in this phase and he was super shy and heavy when he started now he's just happy all the time and he's direct approaching women he's having a blast and he smiles all the time and women are starting to hit on him and he's like i've never had this before women are like flirting with me and walking over to me and telling me I'm handsome. And she, he goes, he goes, this is completely new. And that has a lot to do with his energy, how big his energy is, how full of life he is, how happy he is. And they're just, it's like almost creates like a magnet when you really own that space for real and not faking it. A lot of people fake it. So now he can really start to look at how do I get really good at this? Yeah, the rejections don't bother me. I learn from them. I grow from them. But how do I get really, what are the subtle nuances? So I can find the woman of my dreams. So I can fall madly in love. So I can have a relationship with my dreams. And that's what he's working on now. And it's growing at crazy levels. It is so much fun in that phase. Now there is one challenge that comes in that phase. It's the upper limit problem. A term coined by Gay Hendricks, who wrote a book called, uh, I think it's the upper limit problem. You guys can correct me in the comments if I got the name wrong, I might have it wrong. And he talks about this upper limit problem that when we begin to get really good at being successful, really good at being successful we will get bigger than we've ever got in our lives and that's when the imposter syndrome kicks in the the upper limit problem i shouldn't be this big i shouldn't make this much money i shouldn't have this much success i shouldn't enjoy my life this much i shouldn't meet women like this i shouldn't be working and we want to shrink our life back down to a comfortable level just the mere fact you can see that part of you that wants to shrink because you're getting more success you're moving in unknown areas of life 
You're going into areas of life you've never been before, making more money, having more success. Just the ability to see that is enough to change that reality. There's enough to cause yourself to go, wait a minute, I do deserve this success. If somebody else can do it, I can do it. It's just an upper limit problem. It's just me holding myself back because it's new. And all I have to do is get through the newness of it, get comfortable with it being new and different, and then surrender to it. And boom, I will be there. I can do it. I can make it happen. That alone can be enough to change that reality. So I want to know where you exist most of the time in your life. Are you in stage one, stage two, or stage three? And what are you going to do this week to help master one of these stages for you? It's a challenge. I mean, the hardest one is stage one. If you're clear down in stage one and you're not enjoying life, don't think that you can't. You can enjoy life. You can learn to wake up, as my friend Mark Iron says, ready to seize the day, ready to imagine you're just ready to tackle that day every day. Let's let's say 80% of the time when you can master that, and that is a real skill, then your life can be at a change. At that point, when you're at that level, the only real goal is learning to fall in love with life, is learning to really enjoy life life not going out and getting all these crazy goals but just fall in love with life because once you fall in love with life and you have a passion for being in this body your body right now being in your life with your reality just the way it is watch how everything around you changes your life doesn't stay the same because the nature of life is expansion and growth your life begins to grow magically it gets bigger it gets better every month every year it just keeps growing and growing and growing but the first step is falling in love with your life the way it is second step is falling in love with those goals going after them and uh, learning to fail at them just as much as you as you learn to get the stories out of them learning to learn from them and the third step is learning to nail those goals and getting all the nuances to to blow out the upper limit problem and become the most powerful version of yourself so that's really all I've got for you on this call. Hopefully you enjoyed it and definitely check out my previous video. I'll put a link somewhere in here. You can see that previous video. Check out my book, The Art of Fearless Seduction. If you've never seen it before, never read it, thought about doing an audio copy of that. What would you guys think if I did an audio copy with some updates to it? Uh, definitely put that in the comments too. And with that said, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember, only the confident really live. I'll talk to you in the next video.